Yes, there is a mystery that strangely remains unsolved in the boxing world. But wait, is it really unsolved? Or do we know exactly who got the legendary Frank Warren? So let me tickle your G-spot, get your intrigue wet and moist and tell you all about this legendary tale, which just gets more and more fascinating the deeper we go. So buckle up and listen up fam, man's about to spit some truth ting. Roll with me, done no bosh. So it all happened one fateful day in November 1989 outside the Broadway theater in Barking. Yes, so Frank was linking his ting in Barking. He had a show on there that featured Colin McMillan and although Frank originally intended not to go, he made the decision to make an appearance with his friend John Boutrous, meeting his brother and uncle at the venue. But upon arriving at the theatre, he got out of his car and heard a bang making him think that a car had backfired. He then noticed a man only yards away wearing a balaclava, holding a gun and shaking. A shot must have been fired that missed Frank completely. He then heard a click with no bang, however he then heard another bang hitting the gunman's intended target. Tearing through Frank's chest and puncturing his lungs, sending him to the ground. His friend John shouted out the words, what the fuck are you doing? And he jumped on the attacker, but he managed to scarper free. Frank's uncle and brother rushed out to attend their family member and got the police to take him to Shooters Hill Hospital as soon as they could. His fate at the time was unknown, but... Come on people, this is Frank Warren. This man is fucking immortal, ain't he? It turned out that the bullet came out through his side but was only an inch away from hitting his heart and the only reason he survived was the angle he was standing at. He lost half a lung through the incident and part of his ribs, leading to doctors recommending a lengthy recovery process. But uh, Frank said, nah, fuck that and discharged himself after about a week. So then who was this mystery man in the balaclava? Who was arrested for the crime? Well it was none other than this man, undefeated light welterweight champion Terry Marsh. Two months after the shooting, Terry was charged with attempted murder on the Queensbury promoter and remanded in custody. But all is not as it seems. Oh really, why's that then proper? Well I'll fucking tell you won't I? So why was he chief suspect? Well the former marine, fireman and IBF world champion was previously promoted by Frank who even landed him the world title fight. His very next fight, he defeated Japan's Kameda that would ultimately end up being his last fight in professional boxing. And this is where things get stickier than Johnny Sins' bedsheets. Now Marsh later would claim that he had planned to retire after this fight, but in just a short time after the defense of his title, he signed a contract with Frank for one more huge fight against American boxer Frankie Warren, no relation, for $250,000. However, only days after this, it emerged in the newspapers that Marsh had been diagnosed with epilepsy, deeming him unable to get a license to box, ending his career in the ring. He then went on TV talking about it and said he told everyone who needed to know, insinuating that he told Big Frank, but Warren disagreed. So in true Frank style, upon seeing the interview, knowing the contract was signed without being privy to this vital information, he got the right double fucking up. I want to give him a piece of my mind because I'm very annoyed as I said that I, I read a newspaper story and the fact that I was with him less than sort of 30 now and when that story was printed. So Frank sued Marsh for libel, which is publishing false statements that are damaging to a person's reputation. I just thought I'd throw that in there. I had to look it up because uh, I'm a bit thick. But anyway, he also sued all the papers as well. He went fucking mental, sued the Sun for 35k for the epilepsy report, sued the Express for saying the quote by Marsh that Warren is either deaf or lying. He won 5k for that, bosh. And during the years prior to the shooting, the trial between the pair was ongoing. Now Marsh was a world champion, but he hadn't made a fortune from boxing, so if he lost the case he was set to lose a substantial amount of money. This came to be what the police would call his motive. Now a new trial took place between the pair for the crime. Upon a search of Marsh's home, police found ammunition and bullets. Then, several months later during which Marsh was behind bars, a bombshell confession was put towards the jury. Yes, the damning confession had come from Marsh's Wormwood Scrubs fellow inmate Peter Harris. Harris told the courts how they had become friends inside and one day the boxer had talked of the hatred and bad blood between him and Frank which led him to want to kill him. So with this, the ammunition and the motive, the odds were heavily stacked towards Marsh being the guilty party. However, there was more than meets the eye. The ammunition turned out to be different to the bullets used in the gun that shot Frank. Peter Harris had a history of theft, deception and violence spanning back 20 years making him untrustworthy. And it was also pointed out to the jury that if his accusation of Marsh stood up in court leading to a conviction, he would have got a lesser sentence for his help. He was ultimately grueled by Marsh's lawyer and the majority of the jury didn't believe him. Then, 10 months on from Terry's arrest, with no forensic evidence and an alibi and no one identifying him, he was finally released. 
the gunman was still apparently at large. So who really did shoot our dear old Frank? Well, even though the evidence wasn't there, Terry did still have that motive. But the truth is, nobody really knows. Uh, sorry, no, that's not true, is it? One man does know who did it, and that man is Mr. Frank Warren himself. Now Frank's got them old traditional values, a man should never snitch and things like that, so he has never disclosed the name of the person to anyone in the media. Regardless though, he did find out who did it some years later, but never pursued any action whatsoever towards him. Or her. Yeah, it could have been a her, couldn't it? Sorry. Or them. Oh yeah, fuck me, sorry, I've got to include them. I don't want to upset old fucking balloon boy. But yes, Frank's let it all slide. And he says his reasons for this is basically what goes around comes around. I, I believe what goes around comes around. I didn't know then who it was, but I know now who it was. And believe you me, they've had a real crap time and that hasn't w worked out for them. So, you know, you get paid back in other ways. Incredibly though, this mystery person didn't just hide away completely. He had the front to show his face one day in the same venue as Frank and even extended his hand for a handshake but Frank gave him the old cold shoulder didn't he? He said yeah go on fuck off you fucking biscuit I'll iron you out your salmon well he said something like that do you know what I mean? And anyway that was that. Terry Marsh went on to win his libel case against Frank in 1992 after the attempted murder trial. He never did fight professionally again but did return to the ring in 2015 age 57 competing in chess boxing. Yeah that's actually a thing by the way they play chess for one round then knock fuck out of each other for another round. Fair enough, whatever lights your candle. And in regards to old Frank, this awful event actually cost him a deal worth around £14 million, with the fallout of his London Arena project that he was working on at the same time. The investors pulled out 10 days before signing, worried about the threat of Frank's enemies and losing confidence in him altogether. But ladies and gentlemen, credit where credit is due to this legend. Having just been shot, a major deal falling through, half a lung missing and a weight loss of free stone, he was back at work just over a week after the incident. He pulled up his socks and cracked on and he's still punching today. This man is as resilient as they come. Big up the old Frankie boy, an absolute double top bloke. Now if you enjoyed this vid, have a little watch of these as well, you bunch of double legends. Thanks for watching, peace out for now, man's got a bounce, Later's your peng tinger bosh.